This is part 28 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between each and map methods in jQuery. This is continuation to part 27, so please watch part 27 before proceeding. Here, we have the list of differences between map and each methods. Let's look at a couple of examples first, and those examples should make these differences clear. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here we have an integer array with numbers from 1 to 5. Now let's create a function. Let's name this function A. And this function is going to have two parameters, index and element. And all this function is going to do is multiply the element parameter by 5 and return that value. Now let's make another copy of this function. And let's name this function function B. And another change that we are going to make is reverse the order of parameters. So this function will have element first and then the index, whereas function A has index first and then the element parameter. Okay, so at the moment we have got two functions. Now let's create a variable. Let's name this result1 equals, let's use each function. So dollar dot each. And if you look at this each function, the first parameter is the object which holds the elements that we want to iterate over. And that object is this integer array, which has numbers from 1 to 5. So let's pass that as the first parameter value. And the second parameter is the callback function, the function that gets called for each iteration. So the callback function is going to be this function A. And if you recollect from the previous sessions of this video series, each callback function you know, we'll receive two arguments, the index of the element that we are currently iterating over and the element itself. And that is the order, first the index and then the element. So our callback function for each method is going to be this function A. Similarly, let's create another variable. Let's name this result2 and let's use map method now. And if you look at map method, you know, it has the same set of parameters, you know, the element or the object that has uh, the elements that we want to iterate over. It's going to be integer array and then the callback function. The callback function for map method is going to be function B. Okay. And if you look at the order of the parameters of this callback function, look at that. The first one is the element and then the index. So that's one of the differences between each and map methods. With each method, the order of the parameters is index and element, whereas with map callback function, the order is element and then the index. Okay, so the parameters are reversed for map method. All right, so what do we expect in these two variables now? Look at this, we are iterating over each element in the integer array, and for each element, we are calling this callback function, function A. And if you look at what that function is doing, it is multiplying the element by five. So when one is passed, it's going to multiply that five by five. Uh, similarly, it's going to multiply two by five, three by five, all the elements by five. And then it returns that array. So we expect this result one variable to contain five 10, 15, 20, and 25. Similarly, map method does the same thing. It also multiplies the element by 5. So even result2 variable should contain an array that contains numbers 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Right? So let's actually write these values to the document and see what we get back. So document.write, this result1 variable will give us the result of the each method. So let's put in a string there, each equals whatever we have in the result variable. And let's also include an HTML break in between so that we get the response from each and map on a separate line. So this, the third document.write is going to give us the result of the map method. And result of map method is present in result2 variable. So let's save the changes and let's reload and see what we get. Look at that. Each method returns us the original array. So what's our original array? It contains numbers 1 to 5. And when we call this each method, and, and this is the callback function, function A. So we expected that to actually return you know, something like this, 5, 10, 15, 25. Look at this. Map method returns a new array, which contains the multiplied values 
whereas each method returns the original array. So that's the main difference between each and map method. So each method is an immutable iterator and it returns the original array. Whereas map method is a non-immutable iterator and that's the reason it returns a new array, the array that contains our multiplied numbers. Whereas each method is an immutable iterator and that's the reason it returns the original array. That's the main difference between each and map method. And the other difference is the order of callback arguments. So if you look at the callback function of the each method, you know, the order of the L, um, parameters is index first and then the element, whereas with map method, element first and index next. We can actually prove that. Look at this. Here, you know, function B is the callback function for map method. Now, what do you think is going to happen if we reverse these parameters? So if we make them like this, index and element, so just like function A, look at what's going to happen. Let's actually save those changes. Look at this. At the moment, you know, the original numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and when we multiply them by 5, we get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. But then we have changed the order of the parameters here. So now this element parameter will actually receive the index value. Okay? So that means index starts from 0, so 0 into 5 will be 0 and then 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we should get now 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So let's reload this. because and, and we get that because this element parameter is actually receiving the index value and not the element itself. OK, so that proves the point that with map callback function, the parameters, the arguments, are actually reversed when we compare them with each callback function. Okay, so this example basically proves the first three points. And with map method, we do not have a way to terminate the loop. You know, we cannot break out of the loop. Whereas with each method, when we return false, you know, it's going to terminate the iteration and we can break out of that loop. Let's actually prove that with an example. So let's use the same integer array. Now, instead of using these named functions, I'm actually going to create an anonymous callback function. So let's get rid of these two variables as well, result1 and result2. And with each method, we are passing the integer array. And then here, I'm actually going to create an anonymous callback function. So this is the function that gets called for each iteration. So we are passing the index and element parameters. And what we're going to do is actually write the value of the element to the document. And to that, let's append a comma. All right, so let's make a copy of this one. And instead of using each, I'm going to use map. And with map, the order is element first and then the index. And we are going to do the same thing, you know, write the element value to the document. Okay? And in between, let's actually include this break. Okay? And let's get rid of these two lines here. Okay, so what we expect now, we expect these numbers one, two, three, four, five to be printed twice because we are simply iterating over each element and printing its value um, and then we are appending a comma. So let's save the changes and when we reload, look at that, we get the numbers in both the cases one to five, one to five. Now, let's go ahead and include this check. So this is our each function. So we're basically checking if element is equal to 3, let's return false. OK? And let's do the same thing with map method as well. So basically, we're saying if element is 3, then return false. So what do we expect? When we return false, you know, it break it should break out of this loop, this iteration. And we expect the same to happen with both each and map. And let's actually see what happens. So let's save the changes and let's reload. Look at that. With each function, we have numbers printed from one to two, whereas with map function, we have one, two, three is skipped, and it prints four and five. Let's understand why. 
So with each method, what happens? You know, for the first iteration, gets number one, print start. It goes number two. Is number two equal to three? No, that's false. So it doesn't execute that. It comes here and prints the value. And when it comes to three, so three is equal to three. It returns false. When we return false from the each function, what's going to happen? It's going to break that iteration at that point. It will not iterate through the rest of the items, you know, four and five. So at three, it is returning false. So it will not execute the statement. That's the reason why it doesn't print three. And then at that point, it's going to break that loop. Whereas if you look at map method, so first time we have number one, is number one equal to three? The condition is false, so it comes here and prints number one. And then is two equal to three? No, it comes here, prints that. Is three equal to three? Yes. And it returns false, so it doesn't print this statement. But then at that point, it's not going to break out of the loop. It's going to continue the next iteration. So it brings out 4. Is 4 equal to 3? No. So it will not execute this. Instead, it will come here, prints 4. And then the next element is 5. Is 5 equal to 3? False. So it doesn't come here. It prints number 5. And that's why we get 1, 2, 4, 5 with map, whereas with each, we get only 1 and 2. So with map, we do not have a way to terminate the iteration. Whereas with each, you know, to break the termination, we can simply return false. So those are the differences between map and each methods. And here is the second example that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.